Hello everybody and welcome back to Suzerain. In the last episode, um, we found out that our minister, yep, the minister of the interior who is now gone, she will be running against us in the USP primary. Um, basically what's happened is the party isn't going to try to seek, the party wants a, like, a, like a runoff between she and I. And if she wins and she gets to go uh, up against the front runner to the other parties to be president, if I win, then I get to go. Um, I was I was almost murdered in the last episode, right? Um, here's what I don't like. We went to dinner with her and she told us that uh, she was going to run against us. I don't know why I couldn't immediately have released a statement like on the way home saying that she was fired for gross incompetence because she had allowed all these different... I mean, there's so many different headlines. It always pops up with riots here, riots there, something is happening here, something bad has happened there. I don't know why we couldn't have issued a statement and blamed her for all of it and be like, we are relieving her for gross incompetence because, uh, you know, the state of the country is in complete shambles because she can't, she can't run the minister of the interior correctly. And then if anyone on the USP wanted to vote for her, I basically would just hammer it to the ground. I'd be like, she used to work for me and I fired her for incompetence. Like she couldn't do her job. Look at the cities. The cities are overrun with, with yada, yada, yada. And then of course you can blame me for the policies. But I would just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I gave you all the support you needed to get this done, and you still just couldn't come through with it. But anyway, so she left, and now uh, we have to win that before we can even win the presidency. Um, and then we tried to, we were almost assassinated. We went to the League, the League of Nations, and did nothing. Like we went there and we listened to a bunch of speeches and we gave a bunch of speeches, and then we and then we did nothing. We came back home. So. <laughs> um, we're in the Great Depression now. Uh, our economic, uh, like all the stuff we did for the economy, I guess is it's completely moot. Like everything that we did to get the economy going is completely and utterly 100% moot. Like it, it, we didn't, we, we made no positive impacts whatsoever on the economy. We spent a bunch of money, and we're right back where we started. We're, we're actually worse off than we were then. So, Chancellor Heigl, Eagle, disgraced at Alliance of Nations. A display of a shameful behavior interrupted yes 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 okay all right and i i, I want to play just to figure out who tried to murder me uh soul tarkin soul and the general um forget his name not the minister not this guy but a general who works for him uh tarkin soul and him are sitting next to each other right before the assassination attempt so i assume those two are in on it all right, let's keep going. David has scheduled a private meeting with me, but didn't specify what it was about. I heard a knock on the door. Mr. President, may I come in? Yes, David, please come in. Thank you. He slowly made his way toward the chair in front of the desk and sat down. First of all, thank you for your time. Anything for you, David. I want to ask you how you are doing. I'm, th I'm fine. Thank you for asking. That's very good. Please be sure to take some time for yourself amid all of this. If you ignore the mental fatigue, it will slowly creep in on you. It will poison your thoughts. Thank you for your valuable advice. Thank you for taking the time. Thank, thank you for taking my advice over the years. He started coughing. What a privilege for me. I had the chance to watch my student grow into a fine and strong leader in my lifetime. What a privilege indeed. You tried your best to bring reform to Solon. That, that is valiant in itself. It's okay to feel frustrated by failure but change unfortunately doesn't happen easily. You've paved a path for future generations to follow and they will remember you for it. It wouldn't be possible without you. You are too kind, Mr. President. David coughed again, this time for longer. I overheard a conversation the other day near a newspaper stand. It piqued my interest, so I kept listening. They were talking about you. They were calling you a radical centralist. Explain to me what a radical centrist is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, they weren't wrong. I am a centralist. Centralist. <laughs> Balance. My father used to say, always know yourself. It's good that, that you know what you do. So the elections are fast approaching. How are you feeling about your chances? We will see. Uncertainty doesn't suit you, Mr. President. I'm afraid I have an announcement to make to you. Go on. After the term is done, I will be retiring. I wouldn't be lying if I said I wasn't expecting this. 
I have been in this line of work for many decades now. I swore an oath to myself years ago. I would quit if I ever felt like I didn't have the physical capability to serve anymore. At that point, I would become a hindrance. That time has come. My bones are aching. My hands are shaking. My voice is failing. Besides, I'm sure you can find a younger minister who is a little bit more full of life. You will be sorely missed. You have been a mentor, a teacher, a friend. Thank you for your service to this country. It was an honor, Mr. President. Shake his hand. We don't hug, we shake hands. Before I go, I wanted to mention something. We are probably being watched, so I must be very brief. Be careful of the military. I think they are planning something. I have lived long enough to see two coups in my lifetime, and let's just say I haven't gotten better at recognizing them. I have gotten better at recognizing the signs. You must remember what happened to my father. Just be careful and take care of your family. Take this as the last bit of advice from me. Best of luck, Anton. Thank you. He turned around and he left the room. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty 100% sure that the military is trying to kill me. They really, really like uh, Soul. Like, they really do. Like, I can't believe all these people want to kiss his booty so much. But, you know... Ravens abound. This is our former minister. She challenged Anton Rain. Which is funny because she's supposed to be like the champion of the conservatives who don't want women in politics. They don't want women telling them what to do. They want women to stay at home and learn to sew and take care of the household. So why they think she's a good fit, I don't understand. Workers' Party coming strong. Good. Fortis foreign minister retires. He's a good man. Vice President Glade struggles during campaign. Our Vice President has been hosting rallies trying to sway both the conservatives and the reformists. Hold on, folks. We have a visitor. All right, we're back. Uh, has been hosting rallies trying to sway both conservatives and reformist voters while also trying to attract new undecided vo voters. Unfortunately, due to their close relationship with the administration and the unpopular reputation, the VP is struggling to draw in voters. Well... Yep, I guess he wasn't the best pick for VP. But he's a good man, and that's what we needed. Okay. With the now ex-interior minister challenging President Anton Rain following her resignation, a Congress has been called at which members of the USP will determine the party's future leadership. At the Grand National Assembly, both Graf and Rain will make speeches, after which a vote will be cast. Friday afternoon at the office. Mr. President, there is a problem. What kind of problem? Mr. Hole wants to speak with you. He's in the white room. Please follow me. You know what it's about? He just told me to come get you, sir. Was playing with a pen in front of him. Good evening, Mr. President. I'm here to let you know I'll be handing you my resignation shortly. resignation what is the meaning of this exactly what it looks like i'm resigning from my petition in the cabinet i simply cannot go on anymore talk to me what can i do i'm sorry but i've already made my decision and i won't turn back from it i suppose i owe you my reasons i have failed my mission as a minister of econ economy during our term instead of top stopping the recession we have made it even worse and entered a shortest depression i blame myself for this i couldn't offer you better solutions I have proven that I am unfit to serve the ministry in Sorlin. I will resign at the end of your term. Please don't do this. I am to blame, not you. I am afraid things are already in motion, Mr. President. I took a deep breath. I took at Simon's determined face. I have no choice but to accept your resignation. All right. I think this is the end. So we've lost our economy we've lost our interior uh david is he out yet he'll be gone at the end of the term and i guess we're gonna lose i guess that's what's happening but you know i guess this is it we're just we're just dotting all the i's and crossing the t's at this point there it is here's the congress let's go ahead and get it over with and we have no personal wealth how are you feeling back there sir i'm good that's good to hear I don't believe how this would run against you. She owned her she owed her position to you. Don't worry, she's not going to win. Some people have no respect or gratitude. Honestly, she doesn't owe me anything. I only picked her to get conservative support. It doesn't matter, Sergey. She can do as she pleases. 
Of course, sir. It's not like she can change. She has a chance against you. He parked the car in front of the gate that led to the USP's wing of the assembly. Good luck, Mr. President. See you on the way back. Thank you, Sergey. I entered the building and joined the crowd of influential politicians, lobbyists, and benefactors who had gathered for the turning point. It was almost time for the debate. The crowd dispersed, and the members of the USP went inside the Congress Hall. United Sorland banners hung from every post. I tried to mentally prepare for my speech, but the lingering memories from the first two leadership races were making it hard for me to focus. As if on cue, Lilitha strode past me into the hall, accompanied by a large group of her supporters. Instead of her usual beige, she wore a sun yellow red or a, a sun yellow skirt and a blazer. Gloria was on her right. Octave was on her left. I tried to ignore them as I entered the hall. I took a seat next to Lucian and waited for the session to begin. Mr. President, time to face her. Let's do this. I believe in you, sir. If you remind them who you are right before the vote, you will win the day. Of course I will. Sir, look like it's starting. He pointed at the podium, was there. He was about to introduce the candidates. Ladies and gentlemen, all fell silent. We gather here today with the 28th Congress of the United Sorland Party for the third leadership race in history. As one of the youngest members of the Assembly, I'm honored to be opening the historic session today. The members of the USP will soon be voting on whether President Rain or Gaff shall assume leadership going forward. Before we begin the selection process, I would like to invite both candidates to give a, a speech. First, I would like to invite Anton Rain, the fourth president of Sorland and the chairman of our party. Woo! Thank you, Alvin. Fellow members of the USP, together we have achieved a lot in the past four years. I took office to bring reform to this country. I took on responsibility to fix our constitution. People, want, people wanted reforms from us, so we did our best to deliver. But Liz and the old guard stood in our way. Go ahead and call them out, why not? Took a deep breath. But I am here to do more, to, to bring meaningful change. But I believe if I were to stand together, nobody can stop us. I have made my mistakes, but I promise to fix it all. Help me continue to fight to make this country great. I promise to bring the recession under control in no time. What I have achieved in my first term cannot be denied. There is no time for division. Let's unite under the flag once more. Do not fall to Mrs. Gaff's lies. She betrayed our trust by leaving the very important office. I don't think she can provide any alternative. Mrs. Gaff is a puppet of Tarkin's soul and the old guard, nothing else. Do you want to give control of the party to a woman who ran away from her duties? Give me your support. Let's bring this country together. I know you will do the right thing. Let's get this over with. Elect me again so we can continue our great transformation. Long live United Sorland. I'm going to shook my hand again and I walked back to my seat to sound of a loud applause. I sat back down next to Lucian. It was a good speech, sir. Congratulations. Thank you again for your speech, Mr. President. Now I'd like to invite the next candidate on stage. She's one of the most experienced and respected members of the party. We all know her from accomplishments. Sorland Interior Minister, let's welcome the former Interior Minister of Sorland. Walked up to the podium by an old nationalist song about the sort of civil war, the night of the light and the darkness. Her eyes had a fire in them I have never seen before. Fellow com compatriots, it is an honor to be the candidate for the leadership of our great party. Forgive me, this beautiful song always fills me with emotion. My opponent might call that weakness. I consider it strength. It brings me hope to see all the energy in the Congress Hall today, but hope alone does not suffice. I don't want to listen to songs any longer. I want to sing them from the rooftops. What is it that you want, sons and daughters of Sorland? I'll tell you right now. You want a president who will stand bravely against the wealthy elites and their mansions rather than tow tow to their every demand. Um, we stood against the oligarchs. They're under investigation. Both of them are in prison, and we didn't tow tow to any of their demands. You want a Sorland that protects its own rather than letting in foreigners who have no respect for our culture. Okay. You want a strong and unified Sorland, and I am here to tell you that none of those things are possible as long as Anton Rain is in office. As those who rule the state become more and more alienated from the values that make us who we are. 
and the deplorables who stand silent against this sink us deeper into a quagmire of moral and cultural corruption. He took the party away from its roots with no regard for its core values. He tore his own wife away from her rightful place at home and forced her into politics in the name of the women's liberation, said the woman who never married and never had children, saying how my wife rightful places at home, said the woman who never married and had children. Uh. And, he all, and he did all of that without even managing to fix the recession. Sort of people are still suffering. He is a disgrace to the name of soul. We cannot allow him to taint the accomplishments of this party any further. Hmm. Do we fight or do we just sit there? Do we fight or do we just sit there? Hmm. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's go out with a bang. She's going too far. Don't worry, sir. Oh, oh, I didn't say that out loud. I just... Okay. After nearly four years of the president behaving abnormally against my advice, I had no choice but to tender my resignation, for I believe we could achieve much more, for I still believe in the ideal of the United Sorland. I appeal, you, I appeal to your innate sense of honor and dignity. Elect me as your leader, and I promise that with the Lord on our side, I shall elevate the party and the glorious nation to the heavens. Mr. Rain, your time of leading is through. I am here to bring you, bring down the walls you built. Don't do anything. After all the votes were cast, we sat back down and waited for the announcement. Thank you, everybody, for voting today. The results are ready. After counting every vote, we have come to the conclusion that the winner is of today's leadership vote is determined to be. <laughs> oh, we lost. Yay. Uh, are you okay, sir? I'm fine. Or you didn't get to be vice president for longer. We had a good run. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. What will you do now? Mr. President, political career didn't start with you and it won't end with you. Besides, you're not going anywhere, are you? Um. Yeah, of course not. As long as we figure out a good plan. I'll start my own party and we'll run for president again. I'll continue politics in another party. I'll endorse. Eh. I think we'd be better off in another party. Is this the, the people I like? Is this the... Let me look right quick. Hold on. I don't think it really matters. Yes. Yes, that's the one I like. Because it, it, their, their numbers are growing. So I think that's a good way to go. I'll campaign for them and make sure it loses. If they win, maybe they'll give me an important position. Yeah, there you go. That's an interesting plan, sir. I support your decision. However, I don't think I'll be leaving the UPS myself. I'm sorry. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Good luck to you, sir. Oh, well, we're not going to be president anymore. I don't even know what the point is playing anymore. That sucks. That sucks. Man, that trade war screwed us, man. Dinner at home. The guards formed a cauldron to let me through. The usual crowd of protesters was waiting for me outside the gates. Why am I giving them a suspicious look? I regarded them with suspicion as I passed. With the military against me, could they even be trusted? Once inside, I locked the front door. Hi, Papa. Give her a hug. I was school today. I won a prize at the science fair. Honestly, I think they were teaching girls different stuff before because they knew you were smarter than the boys. You might be right. Mama's in there. I've got to do some homework before dinner. Smells delicious. God, Anton, don't start on me like that. You know I still don't. I'm on edge after the parade. Can't a man greet his wife? Why don't you go fix yourself a drink in the living room? I'll let you know when dinner is ready. I'm not even asking about. I guess she already knows. 
What do you hear from your brother these days? Not much. He writes me letters sometimes. Papa, are we bourgeoisie pigs? Frank has been spending too much time in United Cantana, sweetie. Monica appeared in the doorway. She smiled at the two of us. Dinner is ready. Smelled great. Now that we're all here, I wanted to say something. I know the past four years have been hard on us all. I know I haven't been there for either of you as much as I should have. I hope I can make it up to you someday. But right now, there's no time. We need to get out of Sorland, all of us. Yeah, but we don't have any dollars. And we'll have plenty of time for that because I'm retiring from politics at the end of this term. Taking you both on holiday. Anton, I think you should quit politics. Not, not just drop out of the election, but retire. Honestly, I've been having similar thoughts. With everything that's happened, I don't think you belong in the government. Of course, I don't want to lose the progress we've made for women, but I'm afraid that'll happen anyway. You being president, it wasn't, it hasn't been easy on any of us. Maybe we could go back to the way things were before. Okay, you made your point. I'll retire. I think, I truly think this for the best. Does that mean we're not going to live here anymore? Nope, we're getting as far away from us as possible. Yep. As I spoke, I felt a weight was lifting off my shoulders. I knew I'd made the right choice. I'm still going to keep fighting for women's rights no matter who wins the election. And I won't stop fighting for the cause that I believe in too. From a distance. <laughs> I'll take up farming or something. There we go. Cool. It'll be an adventure. Can we finish dinner now? Of course. There we go. Game over. We had a good run. I think we made some lasting effects. There's some mechanics of the game. This is the first time I've ever played the game. There are some mechanics I don't understand. Like the the budget. I don't understand why. Like I guess we just were at negatives for too long. And the mixed economy. I guess I didn't do enough. And we should have sent the anti-corruption police at the old guard. But just imagine if we would have won the election. Like imagine if there was more time. How crazy would that have been? I mean we're already at like what two hours into this game? Way more than that. All right, let's retire. People of Sorland, this is part of my speech where I would give some official sounding reasons for why I'm giving up politics. The greatest honor bestowed upon me by my fellow countrymen. The truth is, it's important to let go and allow new to take over the reins. I have done my part for this country. I'm proud of what I have achieved. Absolutely. Soul and I've said left the countries in shambles. There was nothing I could have done to make things better. My political opponents blocked me at every turn by trying to compromise with them. I compromised your trust. Constant distraction from our enemies abroad made it impossible for me to focus. At the end of my term, I'll be ending my political career for personal reasons. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on. I'm grateful to walk the path in life with amazing Monica Rain, who has supported me throughout these four years. I'm very lucky to have them. Most importantly, I thank you for supporting me through these difficult years. Four years ago, you began a journey together. We came together to bring prosperity to this glorious nation. Since 1954, swords have been given cliffs to climb and found the tenacity to climb them. Now we can see the valley below. You, are, you once protested our corrupt political establishment and you elected me to fight for you. I finally put Sorland first. To finally put Sorland first. With the power you entrusted upon us, my administration fought to serve your interests alone. That's absolutely 100% true. No BS. Today, Tarkin Soul's cult of personality is no more. Its images have been erased from public places. As I promised four years ago, I made education the focus of my administration and greatly expanded our services to the shortest people. We agreed to pay doctors and nurses, other health staff salaries, commem commemorate with their value to our society. We improved rural treatments sustain sustainably by hiring health staff and upgrading equipment. We built new rural schools and increased access to education. We improved rural education by purchasing new materials and upgrading the old school equipment. We established a minimum wage and expanded rights and legal protections for our workers. We taxed the elites of Sorland to balance the unequal share of wealth across our nation. My term saw a great expansion of women's rights, where women now finally have a voice. 
I'm just I'm just doing the ones I see right up at the bat. I'm not, I don't want to read all of it. We took steps to protect our proud mother tongue and unified our education in the shortest language. The crowd was cheering President Rain. We integrated Sorlin into the international arena. Now Sorlin is a member of ATO. I have dem I have demonstrated that Sorlin can improve a society. Never lose hope, my fellow citizens. I gave my heart and soul to serve this beautiful nation. Great, unique, distinguished. I wish my successor the best of luck. This is the greatest test of oneself. I'd like to make a statement regarding the future of my country. As for, one, as for who should be running the country in my stead, I urge you to vote your support for PFJP. Thank you and good night to all of you. Well done as usual. If you don't mind me asking, how exactly do you plan to spend your retirement? You'll find out. <laughs> What's the plan, Mr. President? Where do you think we should go? Where do you think we should go? I'd like to stay in Sorlin if we can. Ooh, I don't know. Even if my days in politics are over, I could still make a difference with... No, people, we there'd be a target on our head. Also, I wouldn't mind joining Frank in United Cantana. We can still afford a little house in... Okay. Staying in Holston would be the least disruptive for her. Um... I don't know if we we're going to be good over there. I want to live by the coast. They do still love me over there after the whole scene at the festival. Hope you like shellfish. She smiled. Sounds perfect. Let's break the news to Diana tomorrow. Let me kiss our wife. I finished my drink. I wondered what life would have after the presidency would look like. Chapter, chapter uh, 4 checkmate is done. You're going to give us a rundown? Come on, give us a rundown on everything. Tell us what happened. Tell us that Tarkin's soul died. On your last day as president of Sorland, you cleared out all your personal belongings from your office at the Maroon Palace. Sergei gave you a ride home for the last time. You felt relieved. The day after that, Lucy Graff was inaugurated as the new president of Sorland. You sincerely wished her luck. Told the press you hoped she would fail. You paid no attention. Well, we sincerely wished her the best of luck. With your presidency behind you, you set out to begin your new life in Benef. You moved into a modest accommodation, a cozy cottage. It was a far cry from the luxury you'd been enjoying in Full Sword, but you loved waking up to the sound of the waves. You couldn't stay idle for long, though. You became an adjunct professor of politics started writing a memoir, started hosting fabulous gatherings. Uh, we'll be a professor. As you, as your star faded, your wife's rose, Monica emerged as one of the fiercest opponents for the new administration, rallying thousands of women to fight, fight for change. You vocally supported her, stayed silent, but agreed to look after that as Monica spent more in time at Nelson, stayed silent, but used her remaining political influence to lobby we're going to look after the baby. We're going to spend time with our daughter. Your support buoyed Monica to new, yeah, to new heights. People began referring to you as Monica Rain's husband. <laughs> Years went by. <laughs> it's funny. Your teaching career, though unglamorous, offered you a welcome anonymity. You luxuriated in your new life as a civilian, and as the president became a footnote in sort of history. During the school holidays, you would visit Frank, by now living on a commune in United Cantana with his wife and son. The only regret was that you never got back into politics, never accomplished your presidential goals. Yeah, I regret that. We could have done more if we were just a little bit smarter. Okay. There's soulism on that side, and this is reformism, so we're down here in reform. And then there's capital, and then there's socialists. So we, we actually lean more toward capital and less toward socialists. Um, personal details, political parties, house, alma mater. History will remember you as a centrist reformist. Yeah. Between, yeah, for four years, 1.6 million people lost their jobs. Holy crap. 
81% fewer maternal deaths were recorded. During street clashes, 52 police officers and 228 processors were killed. 8,000 were arrested. 33,000 people were arrested for their suspected ties to Red Youth and Red Red Youth and Young Swords. 102,000 conscripts joined the workforce. 3,000 people with Blutish descendants were jailed and 239 were killed. Investigations were launched on 48 businessmen. 1,340 women won a domestic violence case at the courts and 400,000 girls were enrolled at secondary education for the first time. 81,000 companies declared bankruptcy. <laughs> 5 million people lost their state health care coverage. Who were we most in line with? Who the crap is that? Oh, is that our? I think that's our guy. I think that's our. Uh, that's our. That was our. Um, what's his face? Oh, Peter's right there in the middle. That's funny. That's funny. So he leans more towards soul. Is oh that? Yeah, I mean him. He's all about it. She's right there behind him. Gloria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was all I mean I was just I was just opposite of them, that's all. Hard. I don't, even, I don't even know some of these people. Like I don't even know if I ran across them. Oh, this guy, he was way over here. Super capitalist. I think I want to do this again and I'll do I'll do reformist, but I'm gonna try to do more socialist. But anyway. Then finished. That's a great story. That was a great story. Love the game. I'm probably going to play it again off camera just so I can kind of speed through it now that I know how everything is is going but uh that was wonderful that was wonderful can't believe it's over we just had uh surviving the aftermath come to a close now we've had suzerain come to a close I guess after this it's just going to be full speed ahead for uh satisfactory and then uh who knows what's going to happen after that Hey, but thank you for being here with me on this journey. It was a hell of a ride. Didn't get everything we uh, we wanted done, but uh, you know we fought the good fight. Um, it seems like the best thing that we did is is uh, pave the way for our wife to get in there and do some work. I hate that we didn't stay in the party and all that jazz, but you know what? We retired. We were we were worn out, and we. We had the life that some people didn't get, like Peter, you know, our vice president, so. Okay. There it is. Suzerain, thank you folks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.